Today you see two garments made from the same pattern. It's a woven blouse. It's a free pattern. It's got amazing delicate details. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing. First video of 2024. I showed you a technique that involves a little opening, a little slit on the center back seam that allows the circumference of the neckline to open up a little so you can fit the blouses that you're making over your head. That is a feature that you find in a lot of patterns and I've created a separate technique video for that that one with two ways one traditional center back seam and one non-traditional a hack and let's call it a hack with without a center back seam and a modification to the back facing I created those technique videos with the pattern that I'm going to share today and this is a free pattern before getting into the deep of things I want to apologize for noise you might be hearing I'm at my parents home it's a rural area neighbors dogs music the neighbors over there play paddle yeah it can be quite noisy here and yeah I hope you don't mind I'm trying to just drown out those noises and I hope it doesn't come through to you that much. The pattern I'm sharing today is called Tilda Blouse and it's a pattern from Mason Fauve which is a French brand and I've had this pattern in my collection for at least two or three years now. It's not a new pattern, it was released quite a while back and a while back I put it on a poll for Patreon and that was the pattern that won for the December 2023 sew along. Here you can see the liner. I love the details in the center of this neckline which is a little higher. The pattern describes the feature there as pleats but they're actually pin tucks the six of them they're shorter longer and then the ones in the center a lot longer so they're sewn in and they look super super pretty once finished center back seam has a slit you would have already seen the technique video for that it's a swing style in the body easy fit nice amount of space really pretty sleeve the sleeve has the same features whether you do it above the elbow or down to three quarter length a few gathers here on the sleeve cap and then here at the bottom of the sleeve we have four pin tucks the same type that we had on the neckline only there and then a narrow little cuff the technique is exactly the same whether you do it short or long my versions are short i mean hot hot summer right now there's no way i'm doing anything long sleeve the length is sort of at the full hip i made mine a little bit shorter and then for my mom, I just lengthened the angle and just made it into a swing style dress, adding about 14 inches to the length. No special hack there. I don't think making a top into a dress in this case is like a hack. It's just making it longer. <laughs> There's no special technique there. I think the features are really cute, really delicate, and I was really looking forward to sewing this up. Designed for woven fabrics. I think it's always gonna look nicer with a fabric that's fluid, that's drapey the gathers aren't going to turn out poofy <laughs> so anything in the rayon department rayon linen blend 100% rayon a rayon crepe maybe if you want something warmer try a rayon twill or something a little heavier it's like a tensile twill as well crepe silk those are going to be nice if you use a really lightweight cotton lawn I think the swing style will just stick out further away from your body even if being lightweight and you get the gathers here a little bit more voluminous so Different fabrics always create a different look. I prefer the rayon here in this case. One of them is 100% rayon, a plain weave, really lightweight. That's my mom's dress. And for my version, the fabric is a little heavier. It's rayon with linen, but only 13% linen, and it's a little heavier. It's still super, super drapey. And yeah, the fabric for my mom, it's amazing. We bought it together when she visited me in 2022 in Brazil. It's a border print and yeah, she's had it there just waiting for its time and it's time now. It turned out amazing. I left the border print towards the hem and for my version, I have this amazing polka dot. One thing I have to say about polka dots, you want to choose a design that doesn't have that many seam lines when you're using polka dots because when they get cut in half it doesn't look very nice and it can be pretty difficult to match polka dots it can be very lengthy in this case the polka dots are all over the place at different sizes they don't follow like a uniform type of placement on the print so that's why i decided to do a little hack and get rid of that center back seam because i did not want to disrupt the polka dots on the back just for that reason. <laughs> the sizing is in European sizing because this is a French pattern from 34 to 52 European. That goes up to a 51 inch hip in the size chart. There aren't any finished garment measurements in the pattern but I took the time to do some flat pattern measurements there and I figured out there's a lot of ease in the blouse, <laughs> a lot. There's about 8 inches of ease at the bust and about 15, 16 at the hips which is a lot. 
So looking at my measurements, I fall into a size 48 European. I made a size 46, I size down. And my mom, she's a size 44 European at the bust. So I just decided to size down to a 42. So sizing down one size, you'll be fine. If your hips measure 52, 53 inches, you know, higher than what the largest size he offers, you will still be okay because there's so much ease at the hips. Just make sure your bust still fits within the size range because there's a little bit less ease, but there's still quite a lot of ease. Fitting adjustments, none. I didn't make any fitting adjustments. The only thing I did was size down. That's what I would call personalized fitting, but I didn't make any changes to the pattern at all. Mine is an inch shorter because I didn't want mine to be that long and my mom's because it's a dress, it's 14 inches longer. That's it. <laughs> Now for the sewing, you've already seen the technique video showing you how to do the little center back slit there, two ways. For sewing, the seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch everywhere, except for the center back seam that is 5 eighths of an inch. That's the only place where it's a little wider and it does make sense because there's a little slit feature there. So make sure you pay attention to that. I'm pointing it out here, maybe you'll remember. Now in this segment, I'm gonna show you how to do the pin tucks on the neckline. The rest of the sew along is over on my Patreon page. So let's see. I'm going to show you a bit more detail about the block fusing that I do because I usually skip some steps. Here you can see the back facing for this blouse and it's a smallish piece. It's not on the fold. They're going to be two separate facing pieces and you can see the navy fabric behind it. And I've got the interfacing there. And now I'm just going to cut around the edges to get roughly the same shape as the fabric. You can see it's going to be slightly larger than the facing piece. Then I head over to the iron and just open them up. Make sure I put the glue side down of the interfacing and just fuse this on. Make sure it's really well fused. And then I can put my facing piece on top and just trim. I'll get a facing that hasn't changed size or shape. It's going to be exactly the same as the pattern piece because whatever reaction the fabric had with the interfacing has already happened. That means that my facing is not going to be smaller than my neckline and everything's going to end up being really, really neat in the end. This is what I do all the time. I'm cutting with my scissors. I forgot to bring my rotary cutter this time. But I use a rotary cutter as well. Whatever you use, just make sure it's nice and neat. This is another piece that's slightly larger than the facing piece I'm going to need for the front. I've also cut an interfacing piece to match and I'm going to fuse that on and then put my pattern piece on top and cut all the way around and then I'm done with the block fusing for these facings. This is one of the versions I'm going to make of the Tilda blouse but it's going to be a dress. It is a swing style so all I did was extend the same angle as you can see there. This is actually for my mum. <laughs> she really likes this fabric because it's got a type of border print. So I've placed that around the hem area and I lengthened it about 13 inches from the blouse length, keeping the same curve on the front and the back. This is the front, that one's cut on the fold. There are gonna be some little pleats there in the center and this is the facing. It's folded right there, but it does have a different shape once you look at it over here because once the pleats are in, then it's gonna have that shape. This is the back. This one does have a center back seam. The facing also is two pieces, it's not on the fold. There's gonna be a little slit over here. And then on top you can see the sleeve. I'm doing the short sleeve. I was careful to place that type of print on the sleeve. So over here where it's just navy, we're gonna have a different type of sleeve. I think that's gonna look nice. And I cut the cuff for the sleeve from a section of the fabric that was just navy so that there's a little bit of contrast there as well. Not many pieces, I'm super excited for this one. Here are the pattern pieces for the second version that I'm gonna make. This is the original length. You can see it's a swing style here. I'm gonna do a modification on the back, which means I cut the back on the fold. So I don't have a center back seam with the polka dots and I've drafted a different type of facing. So that was a pretty easy modification that you can do if you have a print that you don't wanna break up too much. This would have been impossible to match. The front is original cut on the fold, lots of little pleat marks there with a friction pen. Here's the front facing, that's the original one. Short sleeve with a cuff. If you wanna do the long sleeve, it actually ends up being the same width. So that cuff is both for the short sleeve and the long sleeve version and the technique where the pleats are doesn't change whether it's short or long so the fact that I'm doing mine short <laughs> shouldn't affect you if you want to do it long because it would be the exact same thing. Before sewing the pleats I always want to stay stitch the neckline. It is good practice even if it's not in the instructions I do want to do a stay stitch here to prevent this from stretching out. So after the pleats are done 
we do want the neckline to conserve a shape and size to fit the facing later. So I've got a pin in the center and I'm going to do it directionally from the shoulders into the center and then flip. Then I'm going to do the same with the back. See my allowance later, the neckline is one centimeter or three eighths. So I'm going to do it fairly close to the edge here at about a quarter of an inch with a straight stitch regular stitch length. The reason we do this up to the center and then we flip is to keep the length directional and not have one side stretch out more than the other while we're sewing. The back you see here is on the fold so the neckline is complete. In the original pattern you would have two pieces but the stay stitching would always be the same from the shoulder into the center. Okay here we have the front neckline. I chose this fabric to showcase this area, this detail because it's easy for you to see the marks done with a friction pen. These are called pleats in the pattern, but they are pin tucks basically because they are sewn all the way down. There's three of them on both sides of the neckline. They get longer, so these are short, medium, and then longer. These marks are supposed to be made on the right side of the fabric, as you can see here. Initially, when I was doing the process here, I also had marked them on the wrong side and then I checked the instructions again and then I realized they were supposed to be on the right side. So I have marks here but I'm just going to ignore those. Please mark your little lines on the right side of the fabric. Here it's easy to see. We've already done the stay stitching so that's already we can relax about that neckline stretching out. And now all we have to do is sew these all the way down. So you can see these lines are about 3 eighths of an inch apart so it is a, a basic pin tuck really. So at the bottom, I'm going to poke a pin through there at the bottom of the mark and come out on the other side and that's going to form a little pleat. It's very small, so we're going to have six pin tucks in the end. Get the pin, match the line, come up here on the same line over here and we're going to get a tiny pin tuck. So there's six to sew, they're all in various lengths. You're supposed to choose a thread that matches, I'm going to be, use, I'm going to be using red and I'm not going to be reinforcing at the end. Because remember, this is the right side of the fabric, you know, these pleats are going to be pressed out towards the armhole. You will be able to see bulk if you do that going back and forth. So I'm just going to leave a thread, push it back to the other side and knot it. So I've got one pinned, I'm going to take my time to pin the rest. And then we'll just get these sewn. I've usually done pin tucks where the distance between them is a little bigger. So I've been able to pin everything and sew them one by one. In this case, I had my sneaky suspicion that as I tried to sew this, these are too close together and the press foot would just get on this bulk. So for this blouse, we have to pin each pin tuck individually and sew it before we can pin the next one. So I've tried it for you so you don't have to. <laughs> so on the top, you can reinforce. Back tuck there. But not at the bottom. This is how they're looking so far. Those marks from the friction pen will go when I press them. Super neat. Two down, four to go. Now the next one is the longest one. Then the other one that comes next is also one of the longest and then they start getting shorter again. Okay, all the pin tucks are sewn, beautiful. I'm going to show you how I'm going to deal with the ends here, just on one of them. And it'll be the same for all. It's the easiest way to deal with the loose threads, and it's from the wrong side. So I can see where the last stitch was, and I have both threads there, the one from the top and the bobbin. So if I put my needle there, both of them are going to come out to the back. One here and one there. And I can just do it in one go. And now that I have this here, I can knot it. And it's super fast. I don't have to worry about this coming undone. And then I'm going to get a really clean look on the other side. That'll look seamless, won't have all that back tucking. I've done it on two of them. You can see that's really nice and neat there. Really nice and neat over here at the end. And now I'm going to deal with the rest. This is my mom's navy dress. It's such a pretty print. I left all mainly the navy area on this side of the dress. And you can see the pin tucks here on the front. Three on each side, sewn down, pressed towards the sides. So pretty. 
and then I use the border print area of the fabric to cut the sleeves a little bit of gathering here on the top it's not excessive and then with the print it's harder to see but there are pin tucks there on the bottom of the sleeve as well and the little cuff so pretty so delicate I love the feature I think the shoulder fit is amazing for my mom it fits just like it should so if you choose the bust size correctly maybe size down one you'll still be okay with the shoulders as well it's a higher neckline so that means that this little opening on the back needs to be there for functionality you can't get around there and not sew it because or else your head's gonna get stuck right here <laughs> And it's a very simple finish with a facing and the stitching, everything that goes into doing a facing to have it work okay. This facing is not top stitched down, I've just tucked it at the shoulder seams and then the center back seam goes all the way down. And then look at this amazing border print here at the, in this area of the dress, so pretty. Just a swing style so it's quite a lot of space, quite a lot of ease. Mum's always gonna wear it with a belt. This is how the neckline, this is how the neckline looks on the inside facing is just loose like that it's never going to come out it's all under stitched it's all fixed in place this is how it looks like from the inside very nice and then there's the opening right there very neat my mom wears short dresses as well she's in her early 70s i think she's got beautiful legs that's just my opinion she still wears short dresses just above the knee or just here you know, mid knee so yeah i think she looks really cute let's see it on her this is my mom's Tilda dress in a rayon. The border print at the hem is beautiful and I use the same part of the fabric to cut the part of the sleeves. You can see all the rest is navy with just a few little details on the print. To achieve this look, I cut everything cross grain, which is something I'm very happy to do with rayon. This is a swing style dress. I lengthen the top, so she's always gonna wear it with a belt. Almost over the knee now, it would be longer if she wore it without the belt. Here are the details of the neckline, a small amount of gathers at the sleeve cap. Very nice, delicate with this fabric and the little pin tucks on the front of the neckline or finished with that facing inside and at the back we have a center back seam with a little slit loop and button looks very nice very delicate i have a separate episode on the channel showing how to do that two ways she's very happy with the dress she's wanted to have this fabric made up for ages and it looks really cute in this design and i love how she looks in it This is my version in this amazing polka dot. <laughs> so much of this fabric left over because I loved it so much. I got about four yards or something. So yeah, expect to see something else at some point come up in this fabric. Here you can see the distortion of the polka dots a little with the pin tucks over here. It's all the same as the navy version. Uh, nothing different over here. Here are the pin tucks on the sleeve. Here is the cuff. Very, very pretty. Now here is the difference. I don't have a center back seam. It didn't affect the feet or anything. It's all the same, but I have beautiful uninterrupted polka dots right there. And here is the little slit there with a little loop and button. That little loop is done by hand. My mom did that. This is how the neckline looks on the inside. Regular facing like always, understitched. I've left it just loose over here. In this case, I did decide to top stitch it down around this section. Here you see the modified facing and the little slit right there, which is super neat, really love it. I traveled over here to Chile with no clothes basically. I have like two skirts. I don't have any options for styling. So while I'm here, I'm not gonna be showing you how to style something a few ways. It would be one way. <laughs> And I've just pulled out my denim glissando skirt from Love Notions that goes with everything. So let's see. This is my Tilda top in a rayon linen blend. This is a swing top like it's supposed to be. Mine is an inch shorter. I wanted mine a little bit shorter because it's more voluminous and I think pairing it with something slim fitting like this glissando denim skirt is okay. You can see how generous the ease is at the hips here. I have sewn one size less than what I was meant to according to the size chart. And the details are everything here. The facing finish is super neat. Little bit of gathers there, the little cuffs, the pin tucks on the neckline. It's so pretty, so delicate and unexpected to find on a free pattern. <laughs> so it's really worth your time checking it out. At the back, I have the polka dots and they are uninterrupted because I cut the back on the fold and modified the way I sewed that little slit. The little loop there was done by my mom by hand and it's just so pretty. These details are fun to sew a little different and make this top that much more special. I really enjoyed sewing one for my mom and for me. If you want the longer sleeves, you still get those little pin tucks at the cuff right there. And it's just so pretty, so, so cute.
I recommend the pattern. I think it's really cute. If you don't know how to speak French, that's fine. The instructions are in English in the document, half and half. The same on each pattern piece. You'll see things in French and you'll see in English as well. I really recommend the pattern. I think it's really cute. You can't miss out. It's a free pattern. Why not? <laughs> I'm going to look at this brand a little more. I think these details were really, really pretty. I'm sure they have other things I'm going to enjoy looking at on their website as well. I hope this year I can branch out a little bit more international and try some other international brands as well. I'm always looking for something new. It's a free pattern, so don't miss out and I'll see you here very soon. Bye.